actually just did some searching online. Felt like I was uh, hitting rock bottom and just needed some help and was looking up places and just making phone calls and came across Sovereign and got in contact and decided this was a good place. And Actually, in the process of a DUI right now, mm. so I wanted to kind of um, help myself out a little bit with that. Also, I've been battling depression for about 10 years, so I've been um, up and down and up and down with that, and it gets tiring after a while. Sure. So instead of keep battling, I kind of wanted to win the battle instead of keep losing. crisis units before and I've been in group therapies, regular therapies. I've done a lot of other things. I haven't done a long-term treatment before so I was looking for more of a longer-term treatment facility. Didn't know if a rehab would be a good choice for me but I figured this would be um, a better choice than anything else because obviously I've tried a lot of other things and uh, with not much avail. This is definitely the kind of place where it is what you make it. You have to put in a lot of effort and you have to want it. I definitely wanted it. I definitely wanted to get as much as I possibly could out of it. So, I mean, this meant everything to me. It was, I felt like it was one of my last shots. So I got as much as I possibly could out of it. And um, in comparison, it was a hell of a lot better than any other treatments that I've been in. I was scared out of my mind. Everybody was very welcoming. Uh, you meet different people on different levels. There are people that have been here for a couple of days. There are people that have been here for weeks. So they're always, you know, like, hi, how you doing? What's going on? You know, um, I met one guy that uh, he came in a day after me and he was very, very like up and at him and going, you know, all over the place. And as somebody with depression, I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, this guy needs to get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> but him and I ended up being like best friends after a while. So it was a little crazy at first and you have to get accustomed to it and get used to it. I know my therapists were a little kind of scared because I was very much in my room and like staying in bed. They're like, oh God, we're going to have to drag this girl out of this room every single day. But um, you, you get used to it and everybody was so, so nice and welcoming and you become part of the family very quickly. So it was very, it was very easy after a couple of days. set many expectations just because I, I've obviously I've been in crisis and it's hard to set those expectations. I know how it goes with mental health and how it is to differ with people and you get so many different personalities um, dealing with insurance and things like that. Things kind of get muddled up in the middle. When you come in first you're told you know it's a 30 day program, it's a 45 day program so you just kind of hope for the best and I really was just hoping for the best and um, my expectations were to just, you know, hold on as long as I possibly could. And um, that's really, you guys met those expectations for sure and you made sure that I did hold on as long as I possibly could. <laughs> wake up early so it's it's very good comfortable easy to clean because you have to always keep everything in line with room inspections and everything like that I, I never had a problem with it so I was always very happy with it I'm very simple and clean cut so I love the staff here the techs are amazing they go above and beyond for us as long as we stay in line. I never tried to step on their toes because they really do go above and beyond. They're hilarious. They always try to be the best people that they can possibly be. You know, some of them are in recovery themselves, so they can always relate to us and they always try their best to, you know, not step on our toes as well. And they're always understanding and always have empathy and that's probably one of the best things about them. The therapists are amazing. 
they always, always are there for us as best as they can possibly be. They always try to talk. They're always there, always, always there. The case managers are always working. They'll stay till like six, seven o'clock at night sometimes. Always doing something, always on their computers, always hanging around campus. I mean, they, they work extra, extra overtime. I, I don't think I've seen people work so hard than in this place, to be honest. Group therapy is definitely an interesting process. You get to know everybody pretty quickly through group therapy and everybody always tries to be as open as they possibly can. Some people kind of stay closed off a little bit, but then after a couple group, group sessions, they definitely open up very quickly. And I know with our group, we would always get the new people and then all of a sudden it was like, bam, they were open up pretty quickly. So that made life pretty good. Always animated, always talking. We always tried to crack people as soon as we possibly could because <laughs> we were just those kind of people. But it was always a good good times, good sessions, and we tried to get a, a, as much out of it as we possibly could. Individual sessions, you usually get like one or two a week, which is good. Never, never easy, and I'm, I've said that before. If you have a good time 24-7 here, and you get to goof off and have, you know, an amazing time the entire ride, then you're probably not doing it right. I mean, I've had my bad times as much as I've had my good times, and I've, I've said that to everybody here. So, you know, individual sessions are hard as they are good, and I had an amazing therapist here. She was amazing. Yeah, we definitely have amazing therapists here, and the individual, individuals are really, really good, and they'll always grab you as soon as they possibly can and pull you away if, if it's ever needed. My favorite group is Life Traps with Jess. Because um, you get to learn about different aspects of things when it comes to either, you know, like um, codependency or things along those lines where you might not even know that you're falling into these certain traps that you've been falling into when it comes to relationships or even just regular general things within your life. Mm -hmm. And it brings, it brings up just notions of things that you don't even know you know, aspects, you know, like, oh, you, you might be into this kind of person and that might not be healthy for you. And it makes you question different things that have been happening in your life and the choices that you've been continuing to make. And it just makes you think about the decisions that you've been making and how to change that cycle. And that's probably one of the big things when it comes to mental health and addiction is to just change that cycle and to try to, you know, stop it then and there so that when you do go home, you can stop that cycle and you can make different decisions and not, you know, relapse. We're usually up around 6. I know I wake up around 6.15. Take medication, get your coffee as soon as possible. 7.15 for breakfast. We have morning meeting at 8 o'clock, which I'm lucky enough to run as mayor. And then we're usually at Amberwood, the off-campus facility, around 8.30, 9 o'clock. And then groups kick off from there. So we're in group from about 9, 9.30 till about 12 o'clock for lunch. And then groups after that from about 12.30, 1 o'clock about three o'clock so there's a lot of groups a lot of therapy it's pretty constant pretty consistent I know back at the residential it's groups every hour on the hour lunch breakfast it's all around the same times you get a couple hours of downtime in between you have dinner at five o'clock there's always an NA AA CA meeting at seven o'clock unless you can go to an outside meeting that Times vary with that between like 6.30, 7, 7.30. So you can go off campus and attend an actual meeting, which is usually pretty good because that gets you accustomed to an outside meeting where if you do go home, you know, you're used to going to an actual meeting and getting used to that. So it's a far less scary when you do go home. And it's a good experience because the sober community down here in Florida is, it's an excellent community. Especially with AA and NA, they're amazing people down here.
definitely been the community and uh, the tax, the, the spirit down here is, it's wonderful. We all came together pretty well and that's been one of the big things. This is something we can't do alone. It's something we had to do together. You know, you always feel like you're alone by yourself, whether it is mental health or addiction. It's, you always feel like you're by yourself. You always feel like you're backed into a corner, like you're stuck in that pit. Like it's a constant form of misery, when no matter what illness you have. And it made you work together. It made you become a family. It didn't matter if you were just stepping through the door or if you had been there for weeks or months. You became part of the family and we always made sure people felt welcome and that that camaraderie was something that you had to experience and be a part of and we we never gave people an option and we we had to go through this together and we had to process it together and it was probably one of the most amazing things I mean, there's so many things. Just to be a stronger person, I am. Um, I think I've I lost a lot of focus and doubted myself a lot throughout my entire life, and let my depression almost get the best of me. And to lose that focus and let it just sink, like sink me, and let myself think that I'm gonna go nowhere and now I don't feel like I'm going to go nowhere now I feel like I can actually achieve something and to have my you know family think that um let them think the worst of me and now to have their whole view change on me Jen just from phone calls you know they haven't seen me we haven't video chatted but the relief in their voices is something that's been amazing to just hear, you know, I'm talking about going to AA meetings and NA meetings and just wanting to be home and wanting to see them and spend time with them and just hearing the relief in their voices has been probably one of the most amazing, beautiful things that has ever happened to me here. So just the change has been probably one of the best things. and. And it's been because of this place and it's been because of the work that I've also done on myself, but it has been the majority of being here and being in this place and being with the people here. Definitely, it is what you make it. You have to have the focus, you have to have the drive and unfortunately you have to have hit your rock bottom. You have to want it. You gotta put in and it, what you put in is what you'll get out of it. I put in everything and I, I'm hoping to get out, get out as much as I possibly can and that is definitely my plan. And I know there's plenty of people that can get out as much as they put into it. Um, there's people that have achieved a lot while in here and if I, I know they can do it. So if it's somebody else then I know they can do it as well. There's always hope. There's always a shot, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter what you've done, there's always a shot.